Hello and welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Thursday. It is June the 2nd. We're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we do, there is a lot of pain and suffering that's going on in this world right now. And we have to keep our heads wrapped around the fact that the Lord God uses and wastes nothing. He wastes nothing. And He uses all things for good of all men. Um, and, uh, and certainly in the case in which is about to uh, transpire here before us in Matthew chapter 16, uh, the disciples, and especially Simon Peter, didn't think the plan that the Lord was uh, coming up with was the plan that we should follow, uh, that, that pain and suffering ought not to be a part of the plan, but it is a part of the plan, and it's through that pain and suffering that actually the greatest salvation came to man. But, however, whenever we get to verse 21 in Matthew chapter 16, he says, From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto the disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Uh, so even though he even though he told them he was going to rise on the third day, he was absolutely um, uh, describing to him the terrible suffering that he was going to go through, the rebuke, the, the uh, mocking, and, uh, and, and how he was going to be um, ridiculed uh, and and they said no you, you don't need to go through that you that, that you're the Lord you don't need to go through that and then notice what the Bible says here in verse 22 then Peter took him and began to rebuke him so Jesus is telling him what he's going to what he has to do and what that's going to look like and when Jesus tells him what it's going to look like Peter begins to rebuke the Lord he begins to rebuke the Lord Jesus Christ himself and saying, oh, no. Now watch what he says. Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. They will not do this to you. Not as long as I'm living here, because that is not what should happen. And then in verse 23. But he turned, that is Jesus, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. See, Satan wants to twist and bend everything that God has done. That's what he's been doing since the beginning of time. And um, and Peter comes along and tells the Lord what is going to happen rather than allowing the Lord to tell him what is going to happen. It's just like Adam and Eve in the garden. God says, don't eat of that fruit. Satan came along and said, oh, don't worry about it. Eat of that fruit. You're not going to die. Surely you're not going to die. Well, they did die. They died that day. Very, They died that very day. Not physically, but they died that very day. And any time we question the authority of God's Word when it's an exact statement, I mean, there are some things in the Word of God which are, are hard for us to work through and, and we got to struggle with, but there are some things that are so clear and, and we say, no, we don't want to do that. And that is where we become just like Peter. No, uh, we don't want to get in those, in those conditions because we don't want the Lord to tell us, get thee behind me, Satan. He was talking to Peter. But he called him Satan because he was acting just like his enemy. I've said it, and now you're trying to change it. It's not going to work that way. It's, there's only one way, and that is the way in which it must go. And so he says, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. And uh, that's a strong statement. I mean, especially in light of the statement that, that uh, he had just made when he says, blessed art thou, son of Barjona. For flesh and blood have not revealed thee uh, unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So in one instance, he gets this glowing acclamation and, and commendation for his statement of faith. And then in the next uh, few verses, he's being called Satan himself. Get thee behind me, Satan. And then notice what he says here. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but of those things that be of men. And the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. And God has very clearly told us how this is going to go. And in this life, we shall have trials and tribulations. In this life, there is pain and suffering. It's the way that it's going to go because of the, of the choice and the rejection of God the Father and us choosing sin over, over righteousness. It's us choosing death over life. And because of that, the consequences flow throughout the time of history. But there is a purpose in everything under heaven. And so 
He's very clear on this issue that what we have to do in these moments while we are going through these very difficult days is to believe that God has a plan and a purpose for everything. And even our suffering is going to turn out to be um, a glorious praise uh, from our lips to the glorious God. As Paul said, I, I consider the present suffering of this world not worthy to be compared with the glory of which shall be revealed in us in Christ Jesus. There's coming a day when there'll be no more suffering, as the Bible says, uh, and he shall wipe away every tear from every eye, and there shall be no more uh, no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain, uh, no more crying, for the former things will be passed away. But in these moments, we're going to experience some very difficult things, but we believe the Lord God has overcome. And, uh, and so we have to trust the Lord that he is who he says he is, and what he says will happen, will happen, and we can believe him that it's going to turn out for the greatest good, as it did when he says that he must go and suffer many things of the elders, of the chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, but on that third day, he will raise from the dead. He will arise on the third day, and so Oh, the joy of trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he says this is the way things are going to go, we just say, Lord, let it be. Let it be, O oh Lord, as unto you. You have said it. I believe it. And that is going to settle it for me. And so, Lord, help me to trust you, to follow you with all of my heart. And so I pray today that is your plight, that you go forth in the name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you follow him, believing that he's going to work all things out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So go forth and be encouraged.